ladies and gentlemen, my name is Relogic, and today we're going to be talking about the Ram Kangaroo. A Canadian design, it was the world's first armored personnel carrier. And I know what you're going to say, oh, Relogic, there were half tracks and there was a Mark III version uh, during the First World War armored personnel carrier. But those weren't really the modern version of it. Those were, could be 30 cal machine gun loaded with armor piercing rounds could make those into Swiss cheese. This design was revolutionary in the fact that they took a uh, tank, removed the turret, and then were able to carry troops that were perfectly protected for going into battle. Soon after D-Day, in July of 1944, Lieutenant General Harry Creerar of the 1st Canadian Army was becoming increasingly concerned of manpower shortages due to battlefield losses. The solution came with Lieutenant General Guy Simons, commander of the 2nd Canadian Corps, with the realization that self-propelled guns and tanks were being oversupplied at this point in the war, so that they could easily take off the turret and have a large cavity in this vehicle where troops could then be sitted, stationed, and be protected from outside mortars or machine gun fire and anything that could cause them harm. The original design of the Kangaroo was to convert M7 Priest self-propelled guns uh, from three field of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division. Uh, they were simply made by removing the 105mm gun and ammo storage and which created a large compartment for a about a section's worth of troops to fit into the vehicle. The Kangaroos first saw action on the 8th of August 1944 south of Caen during Operation Totalize to supplement the half-tracks already available to the Canadian Armed Forces. With the effectiveness of the Kangaroos soon realized by the Canadian Army Command, some 500 Ram 2s, a Canadian-designed tank used for training, were converted into Ram Kangaroos, which were tank chassis with the turret removed and had a large opening in the turret ring which was the main access point for the soldiers. These armored personnel carriers, or APCs for short, were praised for their ability to keep up with armored divisions, all while lowering troop casualties and saving troops from having to march hundreds of kilometers across Western Europe. Different variants were quickly developed using other tank chassis, including a Churchill, which was a tank with the remarkable ability to go places other vehicles could not go. So the simple solution was just to build a kangaroo out of one. That way, troops could follow behind and support the armored division wherever they went. Specifications of the Kangaroo were pretty standard regardless of the chassis model. Uh, early models boasted a 50 cal machine gun, while later in the war it was switched out for uh, a mounted 30 cal. But there was one exception to that rule with the Kangaroo Badger, which was a armored personnel carrier fitted with a flamethrower. However, one of the major problems for the Kangaroo was tanks at the time and today were designed so that enemy troops could not easily climb onto the tank or the vehicle which, you know, that doesn't discriminate against who's climbing on the tank. So a lot of Allied troops had difficulty getting into the vehicle, especially when under fire. This also was a problem with dismounting these armored personnel carriers. Uh, a lot of times you had to jump off, and you'll see pictures of, like, Canadians jumping off the kangaroo, and if you landed wrong or you fell down or whatever happened, sprained an ankle, it could cause you to be out of action for some time. Despite these problems, the Ram Kangaroo entered service in September of 1944, in December of that year, the 1st Canadian Armoured Carrier Regiment was formed. Soon after, the Ram Kangaroo first saw service. During the Operation Estonia, the Allied liberation of the Axis-held channel port of La Harvey, and were extensively used by the Allies all the way up into May 1945 with the 7th Armoured Division's march into Hamburg, Germany. Today, it's almost impossible to find a modern fighting force that isn't using some version of the simple Canadian design. Obviously, vast improvements have been made since the original Priest version, including larger mounted weaponry, better maneuverability and speed, along with a better design hatch so that easier movement of troops is a necessity. Their ability to move troops around quick and effectively, all while minimizing casualties, has become a necessity on any modern battlefield. That's all for today, everybody. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Relogic, and we'll catch you guys next time.